Hi booktube, it's Leslie and I am here today to talk to you about a couple more books that I have read for the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. Now, um, this review probably won't be quite as long as my previous because I didn't enjoy these next two books quite as much, um, so I might not have as much um, criticism to give about them. And also, if I say anything a little bit funky, forgive me, but I am tired from a long day of work. Um, so the first one that I'm going to talk about is Elmet by Fiona Mosley. Is um, about a, a small family, just a brother, sister, and their father who decide to kind of take a piece of land and live their own kind of lifestyle. Trying to ignore conventions basically like normal social conventions um so what happens is you have um these three people so you have the narrator daniel and his bro um, sister rather his sister kathy and then their father who he calls daddy um i forgot the father's actual name but i suppose from daniel's perspective that doesn't really matter he's just their father um so what happens is these this family builds a house they take a piece of land they build a house and um the father in this family frequently gets into um court kind of organized fighting um like boxing or something like that and tries to make a living that way but also just by kind of living off the land but then the, the major conflict in this story comes when you realize that he that this family does not actually own the land that they have built this house on and so there's this really big um conflict between this family and then the family who actually owns the land who also happens to own many of the businesses in the area a lot of property and so there's um this big basically it's a it's a kind of a class warfare in a sense where you have all of these people who do like day labor um and work on farms and don't own anything they just have landlords versus the landlords who actually own all the property in the area something interesting about this book was that it has a very very strong strong sense of place um, and the title of this book actually comes from the area where this family lives and so that 100% makes sense and in that way I really did appreciate this book um, I I could I I had a vision um, of this house and where they lived and the the woods surrounding it and the landscape very clear in my mind on the other hand I had a, no real sense of time as in I didn't know when this was taking place until cars were mentioned um, and specific cars too so mr. price is the landowner who is creating problems for this family he drives up to their house in a Land Rover and so I thought that that was such a an interesting like stark reminder of the fact that this family is not in fact isolated that they're not um, able to really live in a time and place of their own making but that there is a lot of context having an influence on their lives whether they like it or not because I was trying to figure out as I was reading like when is this when when does this happen um, and it's really with that mention of cars that not only time but class um, kind of gets brought to the forefront um, of this story I do have personal issues and this could be completely a personal thing and not necessarily no I know this is a personal thing what am I thinking um this is not a critique of the the book itself um or like the way that the book was crafted so I often have a very hard time reading any depictions of violence against women um especially if it's graphic if it's happening just because the character is a woman um anything like sexual violence and Kathy was subject to some of those things I hate that as a tool to make you feel sympathy for the character or um, I mean their whole lives were influenced by violence in a way um, 
but at the same time, I just, personally, I cannot stomach it sometimes. And so that really impacted, negatively impacted my enjoyment of this book. Um, there were some scenes towards the end where I was just like cringing because I couldn't keep going and then something great would happen and then something cringeworthy would happen in the same vein of um, thinking about that violence. And it's not supposed to make you comfortable, but nonetheless, it still did have somewhat of a negative impact on my reading of this. I couldn't decide, I didn't rate this on Goodreads, and I could not decide if I wanted to give it a, like a two star or four stars, honestly. So I think that like craft wise, writing wise, um, this is like a, probably a 4.5. Um, but then my enjoyment of it was really tempered by some things and that I would probably say was closer to like maybe a 2.5 perhaps. Um, so yeah, definitely some mixed feelings on this. Um, even though as I'm talking about it out loud, I am realizing even more of the strengths in terms of how this novel was crafted. Book. Uh, the second book that I am going to talk about today is See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt. Um, again, this I had very mixed feelings on. Is It focuses on Lizzie Borden and the crime um, when her, her father and stepmother were murdered in the late 1800s. Um, so it follows four perspectives. It follows Lizzie, her older sister Emma, um, a maid, their maid Bridget, and then a man who has been hired to do something by their uncle, by Lizzie and Emma's uncle. Most of this book actually goes back and forth between those four different perspectives and then also goes back and forth between the day before um, the Bordens were murdered and the day that they were found. Um, there's a little bit towards the end of the book um, that's like I think 10 years later, 10 um, something like that, but most of this is just covering those two days and kind of explaining, um, kind of slowly unraveling the events that led up to the murder. Um, so, strengths of this book. I, I think that in places it was well written. I did enjoy, when I started reading this book, I did enjoy the prose, um, but it kind of wore on me for after a while um, because there was a lot of imagery in here of like bodily functions and fluids but there is a lot of blood a lot of vomit um of course there's gore because lizzie is the one who finds her father um axe murdered one thing that i did not really like about this particular book was the over reliance on really like physical visceral description and I just ran, decided to like randomly open to a page and I have an example of this kind of stream of consciousness like hyper awareness of the body in a very metaphorical sense um, alright so I'm gonna read this I opened my eyes my shoes were drifting along the blood-stained carpet the last pieces of Mrs. Borden's life licking at my heels like an ocean. I'm in the sea. At the bottom of the ocean, I saw fine strands of gray seaweed, saw little fish swimming through it, hoping to hide from sharks. I crouched into the water and let the blood salt sea cleanse my face. I waded across a wave. I fancied myself an explorer, a deep sea diver. And it just keeps going and going like this. There's, there's a lot of scenes like that that are very stream of consciousness, but at the same time, very grounded in the physical experience of whatever the heck that physical experience was supposed to be. Not really sure. Um, so that was one thing that was turning me off after a while. The other thing that is probably my biggest criticism of this book is that Lizzie and Emma were annoying as fuck. Like they, <laughs> so Lizzie at the time of the crime is 32. 
Emma is in her early 40s. I think she's like 43, 44, something like that. Um, and they act like they are eight-year-olds. They are incredibly immature. They're competitive. They're jealous of one another. Um, and I, and on the one hand, I understand that because they have never been allowed really any independence. Um, they've never really lived out of their father's, like out from under their father's roof. They have, their father is by the account of this book, um, can be quite abusive, um, physically if he is not obeyed. And so on the one hand, I understand that they have some kind of like stunted, like their maturity has been stunted in a way, but you also don't like, I just, I'm having a hard time reconciling characters in their early thirties, early forties acting like hormonal teenagers, like not even hormonal teenagers, but like hormonal 11 year olds. Um, they just are reactive and petty and they throw temper tantrums. Um, something that Bridget does is she, um, will sneak Lizzie like spoonfuls of sugar. And even as an adult, um, Bridget would come across like candy wrappers because Lizzie is still kind of indulging herself in this way is the, the way that Bridget put it. And I just don't see it. Like at some point in your life, you grow up, right? <laughs> at some point in your life, um, I don't know, maybe I'm being really optimistic. Yeah, I, I initially, I think rated it a three stars, three out of five, but then a day or two went by not even a day or two. I finished this yesterday afternoon. Um, but a few hours went by and I started to realize, you know, I don't even remember a lot of what, <laughs> what's going on in this book because it was so frustrating. When I try to decide if I'm going to keep a book, my thinking is, am I going to read this again? Can I see myself reading this again? And not only that, but can I see myself reading this again in the next two years. I do read a lot. Um, and so if I can't, let's say, let's say I read 300 books in the next two years, including rereads. If I can't see this, like either of these books being one of those 300 reads, then I get rid of it. Um, this one I am going to keep because I did buy it when I was in London. And so it's kind of got like a sentimental value to it. Um, but also I did enjoy it a bit more, especially like for, for what it is, if that makes sense. I don't know if it makes sense. So those are my thoughts on those two. Going back to the fact that these are shortlisted or longlisted rather on the women's prize for fiction, I definitely would pick Elmet to make the shortlist over see what I have done. The next two reviews I'm going to have are going to be of Home Fire and Manhattan Beach and hopefully I will have reviews for that. Um, probably won't happen until later this week but um, if you've read any either of those let me know what you think if they sound interesting. Probably not so much based on the way I describe them um, but let me know and I will see you soon. Bye.